For three decades now, Geraldine Cox has been mum to hundreds of disadvantaged children. She's celebrating the anniversary of her Sunrise Orphanage in Cambodia. But before handing over the reins, there's one thing left to do. I want Sunrise Cambodia to be remembered in Australia forever. Geraldine, happy birthday. Thank you. 30 years of Sunrise Cambodia, how does it feel? It feels like a real milestone. Uh, when I started in 1993, I never dreamt that it would be my life. A life of service, helping raise children she could only dream of. Well, for a woman that could never have her own children, and I had everything, I had every treatment known to man, microscopic surgery, everything, and I thought, I'm never going to have anybody call me mum. And now I've got 480 kids calling me mum. How good is that? It all started three decades ago. We have some Australian people here today from Australia. Okay. On the back of civil war in Cambodia, Geraldine came across war orphans who had no one. I was living with the kids, um, sleeping on a mat, going to the toilet in a pit, uh, washing out of a clay pot with a plastic bucket. Um, but I thought, if my kids can do it, so can I. Um, so it was pretty rough in the beginning, but I do now have air conditioning and hot water. <laughs> Hello, I'm Geraldine Cox, founder of Sunrise Cambodia. From there, her vision of Sunrise Cambodia was born, an orphanage and school for hundreds of children, helping the disadvantaged, abandoned, abused and disabled, offering them a safe place sometimes for the first time in their lives. Every adult in their life has harmed them. And I tell them, darling, the worst is over. Everything is now gonna be all right. Sunrise gave me a warm family and I got a real mum. Sunrise provides education pathways so no one leaves without the ability to support themselves. I've got a lawyer, um, I've got a civil uh, engineer, I've got a doctor, um, I've got social workers, I've got people doing hospitality, I've got a, got a girl that um, runs her own travel agency. Um, I could go on and on. Breaking the cycle of poverty in Cambodia. It's basically a second chance and a home that provide love and support. But at 78, Geraldine's now started planning for the next generation at Sunrise. I can no longer do the day-to-day -day operations because it's just too much. How I did it for 30 years, I rang the place and did the fundraising. Now I've handed over to a wonderful successor called Tracy Shelton. She's going to do all the hard work and I'm going to spend all my time doing the fundraising. Tracy Shelton officially replaced Geraldine in running the orphanage on October 1. A volunteer at Sunrise since 1998, she understands the gravity of the role. I think any culture that has such a recent history of so much tragedy and so much suffering, there's always going to be a long-term effect on the future generations. There is still enormous poverty. Um, children being abandoned in hospitals because the parents can't afford their drugs. Um, and if they haven't been picked up in two weeks, the hospitals ring us and we go and pick up the kids. Geraldine will now take on a full-time fundraising role, or as she likes to call it... So now I'm a professional beggar. And she's got one goal left to achieve. They've said to me, Mum, when you're not here, who's going to get us the money? And I've promised them, I said, darlings, I promise you, I won't leave this earth until I've secured your financial stability. Five, six, Australian supporters have helped keep Sunrise afloat when COVID hit the charity hard in 2020. Now Geraldine's hoping Australians will answer the call for help once more. How much money do you need to secure Sunrise's future? My plea to the Australian public is to help me meet my challenge to get a thousand people to give $50 a month. If I can do that, I don't have to ask for any more money. I'll have secured Sunrise for the future. A legacy Geraldine who'll forever be known as the lady with the chopstick in her hair can be proud of. These children have saved me 
without them in my life, I would lived, have lived a life of meaningless materialism that didn't bring me any joy. So they saved me.